Hey Faith Folk, welcome, welcome back. So for today's video, I want to talk about gimmicks with dolls and specifically I want to be much more charitable towards them than I feel like I usually am. <laughs> if you've seen my videos before, then you probably are familiar with like how I feel about gimmicks, which I would characterize as a scale going from apathetic to outright dislike. I feel like stuff like color change, for example, is really unintrusive when it comes to the doll's design. I just like don't have to engage with that gimmick if I don't want to or I can for the novelty of it. Like that doesn't really do a whole lot in terms of like messing up the doll for my personal taste. Whereas things like modern transformation gimmicks are very um, unappealing to me just because I feel like usually so much of the budget goes into the gimmick that then the doll itself looks pretty lackluster. And a lot of the time like transformation dolls that are produced nowadays have like the plastic tops and just like kind of papery skirts like the quality doesn't feel as good so i'm not in general a gimmick person like as an adult collector it's just not something that i really enjoy that being said i do think that's like specifically kind of modern gimmicks and there definitely have been really really cool gimmicks that have been done on dolls mostly in the past at least in my opinion of course you know you never know what the future holds um but yeah i wanted to talk about positive gimmicks this time and i chose barbie just because i feel like barbie has such a large repertoire of dolls to pull from and like she's done so many gimmicks that some of them have to be super cool so i asked you guys here and then also over on instagram to tell me what your favorite gimmick barbie dolls were and y'all pulled through thank you so much for all of the answers that i received very helpful in the creation of this video so now we're going to go through some of the dolls that you guys submitted as well as some that I just wanted to personally add on to the list and talk about what I think were Barbie's best gimmicks and just try to have a happy, fun time. So let's go ahead and get into it. So these dolls are in no particular order. It's not like my least favorite to my most favorite or anything like that. Kind of just random. So we are starting off with the Mermaid Fantasy Barbies and I, I love these so much. I feel like I've talked about these a decent amount on the channel. I think these are just absolutely top tier Barbie mermaids and honestly just mermaid dolls in general like these are so so good I do have the orange one but I have her in a box right now so I I don't know which one it is and I can't pull her out yet but enjoy the image on screen to kind of get an idea the gimmick with these is these dolls did have like silicone tails instead of the plastic tails that I feel like are much more commonly used for mermaid dolls and in addition to that they had like a little squeeze feature where if you squeeze their hips the knee would bend and flap and then the tail also because of the way the like fin was attached it was like a separate piece that you like popped into place so it would kind of flap around so you would squeeze the hips and the doll would like make a swimming motion and it was a very organic like comparatively a very organic swimming motion and I think it's just so so cool design wise I feel like the tails were beautiful and I feel like they really were emblematic of like more of a true mermaid if that makes sense like I, I just feel like the feeling of the silicone tails and the way that they move in the water or even if you just like have them in the air feels so much more real for kids who are playing with it or even just like adults who want to indulge in that fantasy for a second and like pretend that like mermaids are really there in their sink or their bathtub or whatever the case may be. I just feel like it's so much more believable because it's on a hard plastic tail. I have so much love for these dolls. I do think I want to get a second one because I have the orange one, but I kind of want the pink one you're seeing on screen here. So one of you guys did submit this and I wholeheartedly agree. Excellent. Very like simple, but an excellent gimmick from Barbie. <laughs> Next up is one that I did have as a kid. These are the Dance and Flex Barbies and they're just kind of odd. They're kind of funky. As you can tell from the image, they don't have typical Barbie articulation in any sense whether that's like the basic articulation or the made to move no 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 it's none of that their whole limb was just like bendy I don't know exactly how it was done like I'm assuming there was some sort of like wire in there but yeah their arms and their legs and I don't know about I feel like I remember their stomach also being soft but I don't have it anymore like that that's a doll that was a childhood doll that I sadly do not have anymore but I think this is just so fun it's just a very odd way to do articulation but it's very unique and very interesting maybe this is the nostalgia talking because like they definitely don't look realistic right like these don't pose in a way that looks 
natural necessarily <laughs> because they're just awkward and bendy. But I do think it's different and it's fun. It's just something that you don't really see all the time. And I think that it's like a fun thing to be like, oh yeah, these Barbies can dance. You can put their arms and legs in literally any position that you want. Like you can make them go into these crazy like made up dance positions. I just think it's fun. I feel like this one probably had a ton of play value. I mean, like I know I enjoyed it as a kid, but like I'm sure other kids also love this as well, just because it's weird and kind of different. <laughs> and um, I don't know, maybe not the most aesthetically pleasing gimmick, but I still think it's cute. <laughs> Next up, we have the Bubble Angel Barbie, who is just like one example of a gimmick that Barbie has done a couple of times with like, quote unquote, angels like this one or fairies. I think this looks way more like a fairy than an angel. But every once in a while, they'll put out a doll that has wings and the wings are like bubble wands. And I think that is just so, so cute. First of all, because bubbles are so fun. Like I love bubbles. My cat loves bubbles. She likes to like have me blow them and she pops them. It's really, really cute. <laughs> but also I think that the concept of combining this with a winged doll makes so much sense because like if you're holding the doll and you're kind of like waving her around in the air, like she's flying for her to then have bubbles trailing behind her. Cause that's like how you do bubbles too. It's just, I feel like it's a perfect melding of how kids would play with bubble wands and how kids might play with a fairy doll and just combining them in this absolutely perfect perfect fashion so suddenly you have this fairy flying around and she's got like this trail of bubbles going behind her I never had a doll like this as a kid but I feel like I would have absolutely ate that up I would have been so entranced and so excited I've always loved fairies since I was a young child so like I'm sure I would have loved this so much and I do think it's just Again, maybe not like the most aesthetically pleasing from an adult collector standpoint, but I do think it's a very smart way to integrate this design. Like instead of just being like, oh, here's Barbie. She's got like a bubble thing on her dress. Like this is a much more intuitive way of incorporating bubbles into the doll. And I just think it's really smart and really cool and really fun. Now this next doll was unquestionably the most submitted answer both on YouTube here and then also over on Instagram. So many of you guys were like, this is like grail tier doll, such a good gimmick. And I completely agree. So this is a Barbie from like the Fairytopia and Mermaidia line of dolls. And she transforms from a fairy into a mermaid. And I know I said in the intro that transforming gimmicks usually suck. But I, I did make the caveat, that's like modern day ones. This is a great example of a transformation gimmick done perfectly right. Like it's just so good for no reason. <laughs> the way that the wings fold out and then can fold down into the mermaid tail, the way that it's executed just feels so natural. Like there are a lot of gimmick dolls where you look at them and you're like, you can see the gimmick, right? Like it's kind of hard to remove the gimmick from what you're seeing to like just see a fairy for this example or a mermaid because you can tell how it would transform and it's not that you can't like tell how this would transform but I just feel like the way it's designed is a lot more subtle than some transformation gimmicks and I feel like there was enough focus put onto the aesthetics of it instead of just how can we make this logically happen but how can we make this happen and look so pretty both ways. I think both ways to display this doll look very natural. I would not be surprised to hear that this was just a fairy doll that had come out or this was just a mermaid doll that had come out. Like it just feels so natural is like the best word I can think of. It just feels like they're meant to exist in both ways. A lot of transformation dolls to me feel like, oh, this is how it's supposed to look, but like you can also make it do this. This does not feel like that at all. She feels so right as a mermaid and she feels so right as a fairy. And I think it's extremely impressive that this doll is able to capture that and able to capture like such a duality in that way and in such a way that doesn't it doesn't feel gimmicky, even though it's like a huge gimmick. It doesn't feel gimmicky. It doesn't feel like, oh, this doll was made to push the gimmick and like, this is what you do. It just feels like a natural extension of the movie. So I completely understand why so many of y'all submitted this one because it really truly is maybe one of the best transformation dolls I've ever seen. Like it's so, so good for no reason. <laughs> Then we have another Barbie movie doll, although I think this gimmick has also been done on other Barbie dolls, but this was the one that was submitted and like this is also the one that I would think of automatically. So we're going with this. This is Barbie as Rapunzel with magic growing hair. So this doll like looks kind of unassuming and I mean I guess you could consider this sort of a transformation gimmick. 
I don't know if it quite counts, but obviously Rapunzel, like a huge part of the story is her having super, super long hair. And with this hair, uh, with this hair, <laughs> with this doll, you can change the length of her hair. So she has like a little string on her back that you can pull and it like sucks the hair kind of back into the head. That sounds so, like when you say it like that, it sounds so creepy, but it almost makes it into like this little updo, which admittedly, I don't think like looks quite as good but this is I mean it's a gimmick video this is about more of like the play factor than the aesthetic factor obviously the aesthetics are also important because I think that having a doll that looks cute and has a gimmick is like kind of what makes a good gimmick in some cases um so I, I don't love the way she looks with her hair like pulled in but I do think it's a really cool thing to do because then you can take her hairbrush which by the way also sings so, so it's like a secondary gimmick there and you can brush her hair and it will pull back out so it's like you're magically making her hair grow into like the long beautiful flowing Rapunzel hair and I just think that's so so cool I feel like this is another one that I didn't have as a kid like I've never personally held a doll that had this sort of gimmick in my hands but I feel like this would be so cool for kids to hold Hold this doll and to be able to watch the Rapunzel movie and like mimic what they're seeing and like brush the doll's hair and have it grow in their hands like that has to feel so insanely magical <laughs> as a kid and I think it's a really really good use of Barbie as Rapunzel again I think that they have done this with other dolls but like for a Rapunzel doll having a hair gimmick it's such a good idea I feel like sometimes with more modern gimmick dolls <laughs> sometimes it's kind of like oh let's just slap this on here it doesn't have to make sense whereas this one like the fairy one that i was talking about before with the bubble wings that feels like a very natural gimmick to add on to that particular doll so like for rapunzel of course you're gonna have a hair gimmick i feel like this one was beautifully executed another barbie movie one i did not mean to put these all in a row <laughs> but this is barbie from video game hero not necessarily a doll that i like aesthetically um and she's also not the only doll who's ever had this gimmick i know my scene has had this gimmick i think did brats ever do something like this I can't really remember, but regardless, I do think it's a fun gimmick and like this is a Barbie focus video. So we're looking at the Barbie one <laughs> and the whole thing with this is she's got these huge like oversized roller skates, right? Because they're RC roller skates. So it's like a doll mixed with an RC car and it looks a little bit goofy. I'm going to keep it a hundred. I think it looks a little silly. But even thinking it looks silly, I can't deny that this is really cool. <laughs> like, this is just such a fun thing to do. Maybe I'm biased because I do love roller skating. But I just think it's a really cool concept to not just give a doll like an RC car. Like, that's a little bit more basic, I guess you might say. <laughs> but to literally give them RC skates, I think it's just so fun and funky. And it's weird. And again, it's not necessarily like the prettiest gimmick. But I do have to give it major props for even though like, like I said, other brands have done this, it feels kind of more creative. It feels more interesting. And it feels like something that would be so so fun to play with. So like, even though I don't think this doll's cute, I still have to give her props for just existing and being a fun little toy. Oh my gosh. Okay. This next one is like high key wild. I literally had to screenshot a description that I found of her because like she's got a couple of gimmicks and it's kind of crazy. So she has a phone that you can like put in her hand and apparently with the phone, it will like ring somehow. I don't know how this works. Like I truly, I guess like the, the ringing sound would come from like the speakers and it's just like you're pretending it comes from the phone, but you can like raise the phone to Barbie's ear. Like you can move her arm and she'll answer the phone with a pre-recorded phrase, which is really cute. But then the other thing this doll can do is she also has a microphone so you can have her play music. You can actually hook up. It was at the time this was released, it was an MP3 or a CD player, <laughs> but she will bob her head and she'll also like move her whole face. Like she's singing to the music, like this doll's face moves and sometimes that's a bad gimmick I'm not gonna lie I'm sure she looks actually crazy when it's going on like I'm thinking of the Mycene fab faces and how they also could move theirs was like expression based whereas this is Barbie singing along to a song I'm sure that it looks low-key horrific <laughs> when she actually does this but at the same time I can't deny that it's kind of cool right like the fab faces are not the one that we're like talking about today like I'm not focusing on that but while they are horrific you still kind of have to be like, that was an interesting concept. And that's kind of how I feel about this, where it's like, I like the fact that there are a few different gimmicks included. It feels like a very interactive toy. And even though I, I feel like she might look a little scary, 
objectively, it's cool that they were able to like program this so that Barbie's face would move and she would sing along to songs like that. That is cool. Even if it might be like a little uncanny and a little frightening, that's kind of a vibe. And I feel like I have to give them credit for that. <laughs> we are back on the Barbie movie kick. And these are the princess and the popper dolls, Annalise and Erica. I did choose these specifically. One of y'all had just submitted like the Barbie movies that sing along with the Barbie movies, the Barbie movie tie-in dolls that sing songs from the movies because like they have done that on a couple of dolls. I chose these specifically because they sing together. So they like duet their song that they sing in the movie. And I still think that it's just so, so cool. Like that's such a fun way to integrate it because yeah, like other dolls can sing. And I understand that objectively, like they just have the recorded tracks. Like it's not necessarily the most difficult thing to like just make sure that if you press the buttons at the same time they're going to sing together because it's just that they're pausing and like waiting but it feels cool when you get to see it happen right like it feels cool when you press both buttons and suddenly your dolls are not only singing like they're not only playing this music but they're singing with each other like the duet aspect just feels so extra it's like so very next level even though I feel like it's not that difficult to do from like a manufacturing standpoint so i had to give props to these dolls it also helps that i just adore these dolls <laughs> so i had to slip them in here somewhere next up we actually have two dolls that have the same gimmick and i just kind of wanted to shout them both out because why not so the first one is this olympic skater barbie and her gimmick is that she can spin like you can kind of wind her up and she'll do little spins because she's meant to be an ice skater so it's meant to emulate like the spins that skaters will do on the ice and i think that's really really cute again it's just it's one of those things where this very clearly wasn't a gimmick that was just randomly slapped on it's not like here's your assigned gimmick like you're just gonna have to do this and make it work like it ties into what the doll is supposed to be she is a figure skating doll. And so it's like, let's see how we can make this doll feel more like a figure skater or how we can make this doll have an interactive, like playable gimmick that ties in to the fact that she's a figure skater. And I just think it's so such a fun thing to do. And like I said, they have used this a couple of times. There's this twirling ballerina doll that also has a spinning motion. And I, I just think it's fun. I feel like it is almost so obvious. It's like, oh, yeah, figure skaters and ballerinas like they twirl around, they spin. It feels so obvious, but at the same time, I can't, I feel like I'm just repeating myself over and over and over again, but gimmicks don't always feel like that. Like sometimes they are just kind of random. It's like, here's this doll. You can switch her dress around. Why is it reversible? I don't know. There's no story to it. It's just do it, do it, kid. Like I like that this feels like a very obvious gimmick, but it's like so obvious that it feels like it could have been missed and they very easily could have just released the figure skater doll or released the ballerina doll and called it at that and that's it. But adding in that twirling aspect just makes it a little bit more interactive and a little bit more fun. And I got to give props to Barbie for doing that. Okay, these next two are like an amalgamation. <laughs> <laughs> so a couple of you did mention like these dolls specifically or dolls that are very like similar to these dolls specifically. One of y'all just said that you love dolls that glow, which like same, I get it. And then also these next two are just ones that I personally love. <laughs> So this first one is Mermaid Fantasy Barbie. She comes with a, is it Chrissy? That's the baby's name. I always forget. I don't know why. But she has this really cool gimmick. And I also have this doll and she's also stored away. So I'm sorry. <laughs> but she has two little like metal nubs on her tail. And I don't know how like this works. I don't know the science of it. One of y'all has explained it to me before, or maybe multiple of y'all have explained it to me before. And I just... I can't get it. Sorry. <laughs> but you like put your fingers on it and that makes her tail light up. And that is just so unreal. Like that's so cool to me, especially the way that it is integrated. Again, I feel like it's very natural because it's placed at the Barbie's hips, like the little metal like nod nodules are placed at the hips, which I feel like is naturally kind of where you would want to hold the Barbie. Like that's where you can hold her and she's like steady in your hand. And so the fact that that's what activates the glow feels so much more special than if it's just like a here turn on a switch now she's glowing like not that that's not also cool I do appreciate that but I have to like credit this doll specifically for going the extra mile and having kind of a more organic way to put in that glowing aspect and like it feels just more interactive but also so much more natural I just love that and then the next one here is Julia the glowing fairy who like 
I may never be able to stop talking about. I I just I need to just bite the bullet and buy this doll already. Like I I love her so much. <laughs> but this is a fairy and she glows and she's got like these cool like transparent arms and like a semi-transparent belly and I just I just think it's fun. I honestly can't really defend this one as much as the Mermaid Fantasy Barbie cuz she had like the whole finger aspect where it kind of feels like a very intentionally designed part of the doll. This one just glows and it's cool. <laughs> like I just wanted an excuse to talk about her again because I think it's pretty. But to be fair, I can say that I do feel like this one is a good example of, I mean, for me, I, I understand everyone has their own taste, right? But for me, I feel like this is a good example of a doll who very clearly has an aesthetic, right? Like it's not just, here you go, here's this doll, she glows, we slapped rainbows on her, like some of you know, like the Dreamtopia mermaid, <laughs> it's, where it's just, it, it doesn't feel like any effort necessarily was put into making the doll look pretty. It's just like, hey, this is a glowing doll, buy it. This doll, I feel like, obviously, when I inevitably purchase her, I want the glow feature to work. But also, even if it didn't, I still think she's a gorgeous doll, right? I like the fact that she has both aspects. The gimmick is not causing a sacrifice on the end of aesthetics. The aesthetics are not getting in the way of the gimmick. In fact, they are amplifying it to me. Listen, I just love her, okay? I just I had to talk about her. <laughs> these were sh so shocking to me, okay? I had never heard of these Barbies until one of y'all commented about them. So these are the trendy and bendy Barbie dolls. And you might be able to tell just from the picture, <laughs> but their hair has like, I don't know if it's got like wires in it and the hair's like wrapped around it. I don't know the exact specifics of how this is crafted, but the hair is bendable and will hold its shape. And that is pretty freaking cool. Like it is just very, very different. I feel like when we think about hair play gimmicks, it is usually like chalk or like a water dye or something like that, or like a heat change, right? Like where, oh, you put ice on her hair and it changes, or you like put her hair in the sun and it changes color, like it's UV reactive. Those are all things that I'm very used to thinking of when I think of hair gimmicks. Never ever would I have thought of this. <laughs> so it's just interesting because it's very unique to me. Honestly, it makes me think of, I don't know if any of you guys have seen this and I don't even know how they ended up on my For You page on TikTok, but I've gotten a few videos of people making basically like sculptures out of hair, like on people's heads where they will use the person's hair, but also like a lot of extensions. <laughs> and they will like craft the hair into these like crazy things like swans or uh, I'm trying to think of like what else I've seen. I saw a whole bird's nest once. And also, like, I have seen a lot of, uh, like, black people who will take their hair and, like, style it into, like, stars, like, star-shaped poofs. And, like, I just think that's so fun, like, the idea of using hair as, like, a sculpting material almost. And these Barbies very much remind me of that. Like, I just think it's so odd. I don't necessarily like how it looks because it, 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 I don't know. It is a look on some of them. <laughs> I definitely think, um, is it Teresa? I think Teresa's looking kind of rough over there for me personally, <laughs> but it's interesting and it is very different. So like points for ingenuity. This next one, I feel like Loki might be the gimmick doll to end all gimmick dolls just because I feel like there are so many things going on here. <laughs> so this is Dream Glow Barbie. First of all, this Barbie has a soft body instead of the typical like harder plastic body. So it's like meant to be something that you can hug more easily when you are going to sleep, which is not the only time that they've done this. They have made a few Barbies that like kind of have that design where it's like, oh, you're meant to cuddle it when you sleep. So like she's softer. But I chose this one to represent like this sort of gimmick because again, she also has so many other gimmicks that tie in. She comes with a light up tiny little lamp. So she's got like her own nightlight functionally. She comes with glow in the dark hair clips as well as glow in the dark stickers that you could put on the doll, like onto her shirt, or you can just put somewhere else if you'd like. And also her hair streaks glow in the dark too. Like there's just so much going on and I love all of it because somehow all of it is thematic. The soft body, as we said, is like good for cuddling. It's better than like hugging a hard doll in your hands as you're trying to sleep. She comes with a nightlight. She comes with glow in the dark elements like this is just the perfect like sleepover barbie i love this so much i don't even like looking at her i don't even think she's cute objectively like to me i i don't know like i'm not a pajama doll person in general but also i just don't feel 
particularly drawn to her pajamas. But also, I kind of want her just because I feel like this is so cool. And the glow in the dark hair is absolutely sick. Like, this is just so fun and so funky. And she comes with a teensy weensy little toothbrush and a crest toothpaste because this was during Barbie's like branded era. I'm obsessed. I think this is so cool. Ooh, we are back on the bubble kick now, but this time it is the bubbling mermaid Barbie. So she had a crown on her head and then apparently a squeezable tail, which this tail to me does not look particularly squeezable, but like, obviously I'm wrong because that's how it works. You squeeze her tail and then bubbles come out of her crown. And that's really fun. Her tail also does change colors, much like the fairy, how I talked about earlier, that it feels very natural that you would like wave a fairy doll around. So like the bubbles make sense. I mean, underwater bubbles, that also kind of goes in together again as a kid or even as an adult, like you're probably going to hold the Barbie around like the hips or the legs. So like that's an easy way to just squeeze and make the bubbles come out. This just feels again, like a really good integration of a really fun gimmick. I'm a bubble person. So like, of course I like it. <laughs> I just think this is fun and cute. And I'm sure that this was like a real big hit with kids during bath time. I'm sure they went absolutely crazy for this. <laughs> Ooh, this one was really interesting. This is another one that one of you guys submitted and I did not know she exists, but like now that I do, she's pretty cool. So this is the very velvet Barbie and she has three sticker sheets as advertised, <laughs> but they're like the, I, I haven't really seen them as much as stickers or at least like I haven't interacted with them as much as stickers, but you know, those like not even coloring books is a bad way to put it. But you can buy those sheets at like craft stores where it's like this velvety material and then the parts that aren't velvet, it, you can like color with the markers that it comes with. And it's just like an interesting way to do like a coloring book sort of thing. But there's like a raised barrier almost. So I do feel like it kind of helps with staying in the lines for like younger kids. And also it just looks really cool. The stickers are that, like they're velvet stickers and it comes with markers, which by the way, the markers are so ugly. Like these are not good colors to go with the dress. That's my only complaint. Like she should have had different colors for these markers, but it comes with markers. So you color the stickers and then you put them on her dress because her dress is a red velvet. And so instead of the typical black velvet that would be done with like the coloring sheets, they're red velvet stickers. So they blend in with her dress. So you're basically like coloring little like adornments to place onto her dress. And I think that's so fun. Like it's such a cool interactive element. I love me a good craft element with a doll. Like that's one of the few gimmicks that I will routinely prop up because I just, I, I like art in general. And I think it's a really cool thing to encourage kids who are playing with their dolls to get involved in a crafty artsy way. Like I think that's a really nice thing to kind of foster that creativity in kids. And this is a really unique way to do that. I've never seen a doll like this. Like again, when I think of artsy dolls, I think of stuff like the rainbow high coloring create with like, again, like the chalk or the markers that you can draw on the clothes with. And yeah, this is essentially the same thing, but just kind of adding that sticker portion feels different. It feels like it sets it apart. It's very unique. And um, I'm glad I know about this Barbie now. Like I don't want to buy her, but I'm glad that I know about her so I can appreciate her in my heart. <laughs> Okay, we have two more, um, both from the 12 Dancing Princesses movie. This one, kind of harkens back to the spinning gimmick that we talked about with the figure skater and the ballerina Barbies. I only included this <laughs> because the person who submitted this doll <laughs> said that they liked it because the Kelly is spun around like a Beyblade. <laughs> and I have not stopped laughing about that since I read it. <laughs> So she's got this little stage that I guess she performs on and you wind her up and she spins around like a Beyblade <laughs> and that is just so funny. It's not like, again, it's a gimmick that we've already covered, but I couldn't not put it in the video because it just makes me laugh. I just think it's so silly and it's great. And then also from the 12 Dancing Princesses, this is the only like vehicle place that basically the only non doll gimmick that is on the list today, but I had to include it because I do think this is a really, really good movie integration. So this is the carriage from the 12 dancing princesses. And obviously from the name alone, like I've never even seen that movie, but from the name alone, you know, there's a lot of characters, <laughs> like there's a lot of Barbies involved here, like the Kelly's or the Chelsea's or whatever it would have been called at the time of this movie going out. <laughs> but there's a lot of characters, right? So typically you might need a carriage for like two to four dolls. That's not enough for this one. So this is what the carriage looks like in its base state, which would fit that like two to four dolls that you might typically expect. 
but the carriage actually expands. Like there's an extra panel that slides out so you can add in more seating and like more dolls can fit in it. And again, it's, it's quite simple. It's not like this insanely complicated gimmick, but I think it's so cool that they bothered to do that because Quite frankly, I'm going to shit on Modern Day Mattel for a second. <laughs> Even though they have been producing some Barbie stuff that I've been really into, I do kind of feel like Modern Day Mattel would just be like, ah, sorry, you can't fit all of the princesses in. Like, it's just, that's not going to work. You got to just have the small carriage. You can only pick a select number to fit inside. I, I hikey feel like nowadays that's what they would do and just be like, mm, suck, sorry. But with this, they were like, okay, let's find a way to make this carriage expand to be able to fit all of the characters and I just think that's really cool like I didn't include any other like play sensor vehicles or anything on this list just because I mean first of all it wasn't really like what I was mainly thinking of but also I do feel like sort of play sets are almost like entire gimmicks in themselves a lot of the time does that make sense like yes there's set pieces but like there's always some sort of gimmick almost with the play set like I feel like it's very rare to find a play set that doesn't have some sort of like moving element or light up element or something like that right I don't know I just it feels like they maybe stand out a little less to me but this one I think is really cool again quite simplistic but it solves a problem that the movie itself creates and I just appreciate that it exists I think this is a really nice elegant way to solve this problem and also again the carriage doesn't look like shit like <laughs> It's not something where you look at it and you're like, oh yeah, that looks like garbage because they had to make sure it would expand so like they couldn't bother making the horse pretty. Like it looks cute. And so I like the fact that it feels functional. It feels like they are finding a way for you to be able to play the way that like the movie would inspire you to play, but like they also want it to look nice for you. I don't know. This was just, this was a solid one. I'm glad one of y'all brought it up because um, yeah, I wouldn't have thought about this one, but it deserved to be on the list today. But that is going to be it today, guys. I'm sure there are like so, so many more gimmicks that we could get into. I mean, I didn't even cover all the ones they all submitted because I was trying to keep this video at a reasonable length. <laughs> but I do think it's just fun to kind of look at things in a way that I don't typically look at them. I mean, I've done videos on like how and why people like inbox collecting because I'm an out of box collector or why people like to be completionist with lines because that's not something I can relate to. So it's kind of similar with this where it was interesting to take something that typically is more inclined to turn me off of a doll, which is the gimmicks and try to look at it in the positive and look at some really nice examples of gimmicks done right and just be like, you know what? There is another side to things. There's another point of view to things. And it's fun to explore that sometimes. So I hope you guys also had fun with this. If I didn't cover your favorite gimmick Barbie, or if you just want to talk about gimmicks from like other doll brands, feel free to let me know in the comments. I'm very curious to see like what memories this might have triggered for you or like what other dolls this made you think of. So definitely feel free to sound up below. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed today. I hope you have a lovely rest of your day or your night or whatever it might be. And I will catch you in the next one. Bye guys.